Hey friends, welcome and happy Wooly Wednesday. I am Marie with Living Felt and just so chuffed that you are here. We are here in Central Texas and all the amazing fairies are just off camera because we're still doing our social distancing bit, but we are so glad to have you here today. Today we are making travel postcards on our daydream vacations and we thought that we would start in Provence, France. So if you're just tuning in, we're going to do a little 2D needle felt today and I'm really excited to share it with you. So I want to say hi to a few friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, we see Omi there in Harlem. That's awesome. Christina in Barcelona. Thank you for being here. Jane in Albuquerque. Chris in Denison, Texas, where I was born, as a matter of fact. Karina all the way in the Netherlands. Carrie in Vancouver, Canada. We see Claire in the UK and Kelly in Maine. And hey, Sue is in Devon, England. And just yesterday I was Zooming with a new friend in Devon, England. So got to see a little bit of your part of the world. Thank you all so much for being here. It's Wooly Wednesday, which means we're going to hang out together for an hour and poof, maybe a fraction more. <laughs> if we uh, probably will go over today to Needlefelt, our project. And we're just so happy that you all are here. So be sure to say hi and where you're from. You'll see that we have friends all over the world. This is an interactive hour, so thanks for being here and playing with us. And without further ado, we're going to bring in the fairies because they brought some good things to show and share with you. So thanks for being here, y'all. Hi everybody, how are y'all doing today? Fairy Hannah here, and I'm showing y'all our wonder, wonderful 100% wool felt sheets. So these are going to be our wool felt sheets. Um, they are 8 by 12, and we have a very large variety of different colors. So this is just going to be a handful of those colors. They are 100% wool, so you're going to notice a huge difference when you're needle felting with them versus something you may get at the craft store. And I don't know if I said already, this is what Marie's using for today's project. These colors that we have right here are going to be leaf, sage, lavender, horizon, glacier, and ecru, and white. So those are these felt sheets. We thought they'd be really good complementary colors for today's project. All the felt sheets um, are going to be 100% wool. We do have a variety of some wool felt yardage as well. We don't have all of the colors available in the wool felt yardage, but we do have a nice little assortment of colors. And if y'all ever want a specific color that we have available in the felt sheets, we can bring that in for you in the yardage if that's something you're interested in. So those are our wool felt sheets. Next we got Miss Holly coming up to show you some stuff. Bye. Thanks, Hannah. Hi there. We're going to talk about transfer pins. So Marie will be using this later to um, transfer her image onto her felt sheets. And you, that's what these are for, to get your image onto your felt sheets or whatever your background is going to be. Um, we have a variety of colors. Black is by far our most popular color, and it works on... Um, most of the colors. Um, the lighter colors, however, are better for our lighter color um, felts and backgrounds. So you can get um, a, more information on how to use these on our website on the transfer pins page, which is under crafting essentials. You can just search for transfer pins or pins or transfer. And then Marie's going to give you some little tips too as she does her project. Diane wants to know how do you choose what colors you use on the felt sheet? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a black girl. <laughs> I would probably always use black <laughs> because I, it's just, it's versatile. It'll go on every color. Obviously, it won't show up on black or like the dark brown. Um, the lighter ones, I would use on the white, the ecru, the lighter colors because they'll kind of blend in more as you're um, doing your needle felting. You won't be able to see them. Karen says those pens are awesome, and Jennifer says she loves the transfer pens so much she stocked up on it before quarantine. Oh, <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> they go quick. Thank and you. now we have a fairy, Kayla, uh, Becca. <laughs> Yay! Hi, guys. It's Becca. So 
We're going to be using multiple needles today on the project, so if your studio needs a refresh or there's a needle you've been wanting to try, then this is the perfect option for you. This is the Super Variety Pack, which comes with three needles each of every type of needle we carry for a total of 30 needles. Each needle will come taped to this info card that's going to explain what type of needle it is and um, a suggested use for it. Also, for more needle information, you can check out our website, go to the needle page, and there'll be an informative video that will have greater detail about each one of these little friends. Oh, so helpful, Becca. Yay, thank you. Thank you. Up next is Anne. <laughs> Yay. Hi, friends. Today I'm here to share some colors that we'll be working with in our MC1 batting. MC1 batting is our signature line of fiber. It's a short, crimpy, medium fine fiber with a micron count of about 25. It's so smooth, even, and dreamy to work with, especially for two-dimensional needle felted projects like we'll be doing today. So this color right here is MC1 Shire, MC1 Grape, and MC1 Majestic Blue. The MC1 batting is available in a variety of sizes, starting with a half ounce, one ounce, two ounce, and four ounce. Right now, four ounces is the maximum available per color. However, if you're needing more for your project, just give us a call at 877-665-5790 or send us an email at customerservice at livingfelt.com and we'll get you taken care of. One question that we get asked a lot is about what does, what would that size look like in terms of dimensions? This one right here is about 3 inches by 20 inches, 10 inches by 20 inches, Oh, excuse me, this one's 5 inches by 20 inches, 10 inches by 20 inches, and about 20 inches by 20 inches. Those are approximations. Thank you so much, y'all. Next up, we have Fairy Kayla here for some more fun. Woohoo! Thanks, Anne. That was really helpful. People say they love MC1, and Kayla's got more. I do. I have some more MC1 I wanted to share with you today. I'm showing off our MC1 monochrome pack and inside this pack you'll get six colors each will be a half ounce so a total of three ounces on here and these colors may change from round to round depending on our stock um, but we'll have a little handy dandy paper in there that comes in every one that'll tell you which colors they are in this one we have cotton white slate winter gray coal storm gray and black onyx and these will always come with a black and a white which is great for finishing up little details on your projects or yeah, little stuff like that and then I have a question for you why did the pirate take a vacation? Why <laughs> did the pirate take a vacation? <laughs> he needed a little R&R &R. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's my daily dose of embarrassing uh, yeah. myself on the internet <laughs> I'll turn you back over to Miss Marie. Oh, thank you, Kayla. <laughs> Aren't they amazing? Those are the fairies. They keep just goodness flowing in the house all the time. So thank you all so much for playing with us, and thank you for being here today. I hope the little tour of products is helpful. Um, I know that it can be challenging to shop something that's just a flat image. We do our best to demonstrate as many products as we can, but then the, the fairies always like to show you you a little glimpse um, before we actually use it in the show so thank you so much for that and thank you all for being here I've been reading your comments I'm excited to share this with you today and hey I if you I just want to tell you like in advance if you're kind of shy about doing 2d projects or maybe you kind of hold off because you think you're not very good I want to tell you that I'm not very good and I can be shy to do it too but what gets me to do it is I want to share and encourage you and so many of you are way better than me at this and I love that because then it inspires me to try harder dig deeper look from a different angle this is what we're going to do today and this is it unblocked uh, meaning un um, matted and I'm just going to turn overhead a little bit and show you two different versions of this picture of what we're going to be making today and then I'm going to share the wool colors as well so allow me to zoom in here a little bit because we are way zoomed out 
and I'm going to get you a little up close and personal picture of the, per the picture that we're working on today. There's a few different ways you could go about this. So here it is matted. It's always a little bit easier to see once you actually matte the image. Now this is one that I did with a darker sky and it doesn't have as much detail in it yet. And this is the first one that I did. The sky is a little bit lighter. Uh, I made it a little small. So we've expanded the image um, in the PDF. I'm gonna tell you how to get that so that you can get a good four by six image out of today's project. So in the description after the live show, uh, you can download the PDF for today's project. It will go over all the supplies that we're using. It's going to name a range of our MC1 colors that we suggest you might want to try. You can use any colors you want to make your project. You're going to get a picture of the original photograph in how it was presented. And then you're going to get a picture of the photograph in reverse. So I'm going to show that to you. This is the reverse image and mine I've already outlined with my iron-on transfer pen. So the first thing you want to do is grab the PDF. We shared a link uh, for that in our Facebook group earlier, um, Living Felt Friends, but also you can just go to our website, scroll to the bottom and click on YouTube videos. There you're going to see 2020 and 2019. So click on 2020 and the very top link is going to say um, like Lavender Fields 2D Landscape. If you click on that, you'll be able to download the PDF. You don't have to sign in or anything. You can just download it and start using it right away. So that's what we're going to do today. And let me show you a look at some of the MC1 uh, colors that we're going to be using today. And then I'll go over basically how we get your image onto your felt. So here's a look. Let me just, I have to come back out a little bit. Here's a look at the color palette that I used. Um, and again, it's just a suggestion. You might see something different than I see when you look at the colors in this picture. So I'm just going to, uh, maybe I'll just bring this in a little closer and let's look at some of these colors together. Okay, so I have here uh, things that I want to use for my sky. So um, here, this is blue azul. This is um, cobalt blue and majestic blue. If your sky has a lot of dark in it, you might go as dark as midnight. Um, these, are, these are both cobalt right here. And then I brought in some blueberry. Blueberry is something that you might consider in your sky. I also see in here pink, maybe some purple, which we can get right over here, and I'll show that to you, and white. And what I have done is I carted some fibers together. I blended and I'm gonna show you just how to finger blend today. But this here is blue azul and majestic blue carted together 50-50. And this right here is blue azul and white, approximately 50-50. And I did those on my hand cards, but the pictures that I'm sharing with you, I just carded by hand. It's just a little, a way to, you know, card a little bit more. So these are kind of the colors that I see in the sky, and you can make yours however you like. Um, and here is a little pink mixed with white, mixed with a little light purple. So have fun with making some blends and just trying them out and see if you kind of see them in your own picture. And you can make little blends as small as this, and I'm going to show you how. Um, in the landscape, I played with a few different colors for my lavender, and it looks different on the computer image than it might look on the printout image, so have fun with that. This right here is grape and this is blueberry. This is boysenberry. And I used all of these to bring out some colors in these lavender fields. This little trail, which I just love this little road here, was so attractive to me about this photograph. Um, and I used, this is oatmeal, and then I added some white to the oatmeal for the lightest parts. And then this right here is cafe au lait for just like the ready kind of darker edges, just a pinch. I used mango and this right here is um, 
hun is buttercup, not honeysuckle, but buttercup. And buttercup or honeysuckle will work, which they're just light yellows. This is caramel and right here, and this is pecan. And I see that, I'll just hold this up a little bit. I kind of use the caramel in the more in these areas right here on top of the grass or the pecan as well um, just to add a little bit of that earthy tone and then let's look at the greens and really you could play with this and make your picture completely different colors if you want and you might see things that I don't see at all so I tried to operate without uh, you know pulling in every color that we have but it is really fun to pull together a uh, a collection of colors and then pull out from your palette whatever you have and stowed away pull out little bits so that you can just work on a picture like this so this one here is spruce bonsai olive shire this is lemongrass and this right here is leaf which is just like a straight up green and then like here and I'll, we'll do this together but here I mixed that pecan with some shire so that we can get these sort of browner areas like that so what's really fun is that these bats are super easy to blend um, yeah and you can just make all kinds of colors if you want now I'm going to pull up some of your questions and do my best to answer some of your questions here and I know <laughs> I know that you're gonna have a lot um, so thank you all for being here with me and just joining in the fun the first thing we want to do and uh, let me just go over a few more things and then I will address some of your questions the first thing we want to do is get our image onto our fabric. Now you can use linen, you can use denim, you can use cotton. It might pucker. If, it, the, if it's too tightly woven, the fabric that you choose, it might pucker. If it's too loosely woven, like a burlap, you're going to find that as you poke more fiber in, it just wants to go through to the other side. So test different fabrics. I really like using the 100% wool felt sheets because they hold up to a dense application. Um, but you can also lightly tack it on there so that it can kind of almost sit on top. So I'll show you both the front and the back of my images. The first thing you want to do is get your artwork onto your fabric. And you don't have to freehand it. You can use something like these iron-on transfer pens. So what we do is I, for this one I did the reverse image and you can see all these black lines are the iron-on transfer pen applied to it so all you do is you kind of juice up the pen take the cap off and apply it to a separate piece of paper so that you get the felt tip inked up you're gonna trace over all the lines that are important to you and I like also just kind of putting a mark on the corners so I know where to kind of stop my fiber or let it flow over um, because if I if I mat my picture I want the fiber to be past the mat and not inside the mat so the edges can help you and you just want to trace over the lines that are important to you you're going to turn it over and use a hot dry iron to transfer this to your fabric and you'll know that it's transferred when you can see the ink lines from the back side that's a good indicator but just take your time and just peel back and peek and make sure you can see the lines you want and I know this probably looks really busy um, but what you'll do is you'll keep a little image there so that you can use it for reference and if it's easier for you you can also keep this one handy so you can look at it and go what was that line I traced there anyway it could be a little confusing um, so this is my it's not a cheater y'all some artists always draw out their lines in advance so don't be shy about putting your lines onto your fabric before you put it down. Not everybody is Bob Ross. God bless him. We all love Bob Ross, but not everybody is Bob Ross. <laughs> and sometimes it just helps to get our lines in place. So this is our Earth Harmony needle uh, felting foam. It should last you a long, long time. And today we are mostly going to be working with our 42 triangle needles and maybe some of our 40 triangle needles also. Um, so that we don't poke through too far. So here's an example of what the back looks like. I promise you when you're only putting this much fiber through the back side of your 
felt or fabric, you're not going to destroy your foam. So consider using a medium to medium to fine needles. And um, Victoria says, does the pre-felt color affect the outcome of the landscape color after it's uh, affected? So let me first clarify, Victoria, that this is felt and not pre-felt. Pre-felt is unfelted. This is 100% wool felt it's completely felted no it's not going to impact the color but depending on how you frame your piece you might decide that you like this on black or you like it on white or you want it on blue and that's why we showed you some different colors so it depends on whether you're going to have the felt show but you want to put down enough fiber that the background does not show through um, so i just tried to pick something that i felt was in harmony with my picture overall uh, so a couple of folks are saying that you would like to learn how to hand card and you know we do have a video on YouTube hand carding and there's probably also one on our the hand carder page on our website so I encourage you to go ahead and give that a look and um, what I'm gonna do real quick here is I'm gonna pop up the original image which is oh let me let me do this one which is pretty amazing um, way more striking than we can print out on our regular printer and I would love to continue to, to practice this piece and get this level of realism and I also wanted to wet felt a 2D image with you but we've been wet felting quite a bit lately and I know that some people are a little uh, maybe they like needle felting a little more than wet felting and so we're gonna just try and mix it up for y'all and go you know do both we're gonna do both um, so I'm going to start with my sky here and I want to encourage you if you want to get more lines in your image than what you originally put down like let's say you want to trace out your border well go ahead and get a pencil and put it to action so that you can um, kind of get your lines into place and a pencil if the fabric is light enough will definitely show up like I missed my corner here but I think it's going to be where these lines end, it's probably going to be about right there. So you can give yourself some lines. Uh, see how nicely that pencil shows up? Give yourself some lines to work off of. And you can also enhance any lines if you're, like I said, if your fabric is light enough that you maybe didn't capture on your iron-on transfer pen. So you might put something extra in here. You might decide this little scene needs a chalet, <laughs> a cabin, oh, I don't know, a person, whatever you like. And then you can kind of enhance those lines just by uh, putting them in with your pencil and completing them out. So consider that if you want to. Um, okay, let's see. Blending tips, how long do the pens last, Kevin asks. Uh, Kevin, the pens, I, they last quite a while. It just depends on how much you, you put them to work, really. So keep the cap on, of course. Um, just keep the cap on, of course. Now, this is our Blue Azul. And to what you might do with the Blue Azul is just start with a 50-50 blend is usually what I do. And that's just, you know, approximately pull off about uh, equal amounts and split these apart and then we're just gonna stack and pull. When you're doing a little picture like this, it's pretty easy to do and this will keep you, some people would fill in the whole sky with blue, but for me, it's a little bit easier to build that sky um, in bits. And this is just the way I work. You might be one who just finds it easier to fill in the whole sky with this blue and then sit the you know the pinks and the whites and the dark colors on top and I find that for me is just a little more challenging so I do like to make up some blends in advance and then pull those in as I want so let's make some uh, pink real quick and I'm gonna read a few questions while I make a little bit of a pink blend so we'll start first with some pink and white together Emma asked if you have to work on wool felt or can it be polyester felt and I would say the best thing to do is to make your own tests. Don't cut yourself short. Work with 100% wool felt one time and then work on your polyester felt and you be the decision maker because 
I know what I like and I can tell you that wool felt is thicker it's thicker and it can hold more wool and it can hold more detail but if you're working with a you know grade school kids it might just be more affordable to work with regular craft felt um, that you get at the store so I just put a little bit of that purple on top and you don't want to blend it all the way because you want to be able to pick uh, pieces that are lighter and pieces that are darker and um, Carrie Kirk asked, was I using special paper? Nope, just regular old printer paper you can uh, trace over. And uh, Nancy, we made this image four by six. And any suggestion for finger blending when you have arthritis? Carol, I don't really know. I mean, I think if you can hold a pen, then the, if you can hold a needle, then the finger blending probably shouldn't be too difficult because it's not a very strenuous activity. It's actually pretty light. Uh, Ronnie, do the pens wash out? I don't believe they do, Penny, uh, Ronnie, so you want to cover them up. Um, can you combine wet felting the background and needle felt details? Grow asks. Grow yes and i would encourage that you watch our um cluster houses video there's one and two uh the cluster houses video we wet felted a background and then we needle felted the cluster houses on top but you could also wet felt after i just i wouldn't wet felt this because it's only going to shrink like less than 10 percent you could wet felt with a massaging on top but i wouldn't like roll it because it's not going to do what you want it to do Okay, so let's jump in here and let's get some color in our sky. I think I'm actually going to start with the medium blue, the medium blue bits. Uh, I've done the sky a few times now. And I'm just going to kind of spread it out and layer it on and fill in my area. It's going to be a little darker up there uh, that way. And I know there's not a ton of white in this sky, so I'm going to be mindful about that. But, you know, your sky can be different every time. You know, the sky changes as you're looking at it anyway. So I wouldn't, you know, don't um, criticize your work too much. I mean, I think first have fun and play with it and find your way. And thank you all for these great questions. So what, Angela says, what are all the white nubs I see in the colors? So what you're looking at is I blended with white, the ones that I showed you. I blended with white. So the white is just, um, is kind of clumping up in there. And this is a medium fine fiber. So you can expect it to, it, it can nub up a little bit when five fine fibers are kind of like over carded but you can pick those out or you can cover them up no big deal all right so I'm gonna actually bring this part of the sky just a little bit darker and you might find that it's helpful to put the darker colors underneath and the lighter colors on top and just to have fun kind of building your sky out as you go Let me keep my little my little picture here and I'm not a fast needle felter some of you who felted with me a little bit you know that I'm I'm more likely to take my time uh, I did one of these pictures last night and it's not in my mind hundred percent finished I could easily spend an entire another night on it so the first thing I'm going to do um, is start to tack down some of these fibers and we're going to fill in all the gaps and all the colors but I'm going to find peek under there and see where your skyline is I'm going to be working with a cluster just a rubber banded cluster of 42 triangle needles and a single 42 triangle needle so the first thing I do is kind of use my hand here to push that fiber back and I want to come just at that little mountain ridge line and so I'm just holding the fibers flat and poking along the ridge line right there to get everything to lay down. Now, if you find stuff in your fiber that you don't want, you can keep a little um, like set of tweezers or something on your work surface and just pluck it out when you're in the surface layer, when you're in that final layer. And now notice my the angle of my needle is kind of like this. It's not straight up and down. It's kind of like this. You don't always have to go straight up and down. Play with your angle and notice how it impacts 
the hole you're making with your needle. And don't be shy to try fine needles. Now I want my image to come outside because I want it, this whole thing to hide under whatever mat I'm using. And now I'm just kind of tacking everything down. So once I get that skyline in, I don't have to be so exact. And I'm going to tack everything down and then we're just going to have fun filling in the sky and getting it to look just like we want. So this is just our base sky. And I even see purple in here, which is I put I put a lot more purple in my in my other skies that I did. I think it's fun to play with it. Okay. How thick are your puffs? These puffs are what I'm laying down. What I'm laying down is just thick enough that you cannot see through to the um, background. So like right here, I can see through to the background and I'm going to put a little more wool on top of that. But I'm going to go a little bit dark. So you just want enough that you cannot see through it. There's no reason. I'm not making this multi-dimensional. I want it to be flat, like such that I could put it behind glass if I want. And I sort of work in a draft mode. That means I will needle felt this, but I may not refine it and smooth it all out. Um, as I just keep getting colors on and then I'll go back and really hit it with more intensity as far as applying that um, flattening the, all that color down so I'm gonna have just take this is our soft pink we have like three shades of this particular pink it's really fun to have all of them but I'm gonna put that little pink that you see right here I'm gonna put that right tuck that right under there before I put any more wool on so I can kind of build around it and start putting some pink in my sky. Now I don't have a painter's eye, meaning it's very difficult for me to look at a landscape and see everything in the same relationship on my piece that it is there. So some of you are more trained or even just have a better natural tendency than I do. And um, you know, that's cool. Like not everybody has a good ability to see that in landscapes and stuff. So wherever you are, I hope that you just kind of have fun with it and play with it. Now this, see how thin and wispy this is? Um, I want this to be almost see-through and not solid. And then we can spread these out and tack them down. You, this is why you want a delicate needle so that when you tack it down it doesn't push it doesn't make big spears in there and then you can go back and add more like maybe you want it to be a little bit wider there a little bit more pink there whatever you see you're just going to add those colors in on top uh, let's see where do you find your copyright free photo and this one um, this one we got off of I think it was Pixabay this one came from Pixabay and um, this one is copyright free sometimes I'll buy images uh, for the ability to share them with y'all um, and sometimes they're copyright free so we have some more vacation photos planned and one of them I was super excited I heard back from the photographer last night and we're going to be able to use just what I want to tell you is one of the places that I really want to go so we're going to do some more um, travel postcards with you guys and you can go to Pexels that's P-E xels.com and you can go to pixabay.com and get copyright free images make sure you read the um, licensing so you're aware it doesn't mean that you can go some in some cases that you can go put it on t-shirts you know so just pay attention to whatever their licensing requirements are um, and I'm going to build this one cloud down right from right here. So I'm not going for an exact match of what's in the photo. I'm just going to kind of go for the vibe. And to needle felt with you, I have to move a little faster than I would on my own. So again, mine is not going to match this exactly, but you can kind of see the colors that we're using to get towards that. And if you see something in there that feels too strong, like see that dot of pink right there is too strong, well then just pull it out or fluff it out so that you don't feel like you have polka dots in your sky that you don't want. You can just pull those things out or cover them up with something else. 
Crunch, 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 Patricia says. Do you felt down every fiber or leave it unfelted for texture? Victoria, I don't leave unfelted for texture. If I want texture, and I think this speaks to what Ronnie O asked, do I skip areas? If I want an area to look raised, I'm going to add more fiber. I don't like stuff to be loose, uh, especially if wool is not behind glass. If it's loose, it's going to collect more dust, and that's just experience talking. So... Um, meaning I've left stuff loose, you know, or when I first started felting, I didn't know how to felt very well, to be honest, like how to felt 100%. Um, so I would say if you want it to have dimension, for me personally, I don't leave it loose, but you know what? I have a friend who does landscapes and likes to leave it with texture. So you have artist license. This is your picture. Do it the way you want. <laughs> We don't. We try not to have a lot of rules, but I do like to teach you how to make good felt. Um, and I like to, where these lines seem hard, I like to just kind of flick them out and then gently tack them down. Like if you're if you're not wanting a hard line where you have something, then um, you can fluff it out a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna have to move on from the sky and show you um, how you might consider the landscape. Now, some people would fill all this in with a solid color and then add the details on top. And for me, that's a little more challenging. Again, I'm, I can be visually challenged even shopping in the grocery store. If food, one package looks too much like the other, I'm likely to buy the wrong package. So for me, I have to really break these things down into incremental units. And one of the things I'm gonna do is get this um, little road or path in right away so that as I start to add my greens, start to add my greens, um, I can find it. And what you'll see if you look at this picture up close, you can see the road here and it almost disappears right here. And then it swoops down. Now this is the kind of thing that some artists just know, and then someone like me would get it wrong. I, try, I would try and draw it 10 times and I would get it wrong. And even if I got it right, I would think it's wrong. Like I'm very spatially challenged. So I'm not shy to draw out the lines first and follow. And I think that if you're like me and you need that bit of guidance, well then the more you do it, the more you learn. It's like perfect practice, right? You're practicing something um, following a correct example, then it's just going to build your skill and everybody who becomes good at something through practice is because they practiced. <laughs> so don't be shy to practice. Now, right here uh, along this road, I'm going to pull in my green 42 triangle because what I want to do, I want that wool there for whatever reason. I want it there, but I want to push it in just a little bit further so it's okay on that narrow if it disappears a little bit. And then I'm just going to spread this out and kind of fill it in. And... Melissa says she loves the idea of working small like this. It's not so overwhelming for beginners. And Melissa, I agree. I want to tell you that there were a lot of years where I was afraid to try to do something realistic. And the first one I tried, I started pretty large. Um, and then I went back and started doing uh, the uh, animal dog portraits. And it really helped me to work in a small size. And it helped build my confidence, too, because I could look at it and see what was wrong or have my husband look at it and help me see what was wrong so that I could fix it. And that, by wrong, I just mean if you're going for realism, then you're wanting to learn how to transfer what you see there to here. And I'm not... For this, I'm not even all that concerned about realism. It's more just a artistic, painterly representation of an otherwise beautifully captured moment in this field. Okay, right here along this road, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but you can even, if you want, you can just take some white and drop it right on top. And if you drop a thin layer on top of this oatmeal, then that what is underneath will kind of show through. And you can see that you don't even have to necessarily blend it. You can just drop it down right on top. And you can almost, I do this often, almost paint without needle felting until I am starting to see the colors that I want. Let's bring in the cafe au lait just 
just a hair darker along these sides and then I'll tack it down once I see the blend or the you know variations that I want in this kind of showing themselves I'm gonna put this here and here just like that <laughs> Jennifer says she can't wait to see everyone's vacation pictures um, I agree I can't wait to see where you all will go and I do have at least two more planned so what I'm going to be looking for on the Facebook group is next week if y'all want to jump right into another one or you want to have a, a, a simple and fun playful wet felting project in between and I do see Lee Davies says I know we're needle felting today can you also wet felt the province background and needle felt on top of that what effect would that be and Lee yes you know what you could do for example um, and I think we have a photo album in our Facebook group of this as well but what you can do is you can lay out the fibers for the sky and lay out the various tones for the landscape and wet felt that background and then go back and needle felt the details on top so I will look at I probably won't do that for next week because I have a few more things planned but I'll definitely look at doing that for um, maybe one of our one of our pieces I wanted to needle felt because I know that so many people um, you know have kind of been sitting out some of the wet felting bits now why don't we go back in I'm gonna go right back in here on the skyline and I think my sky my sky might be a little bit bluer than I wanted but for the sake of today's exercise I'm gonna leave it just like it is and not fuss over it and then what you can do if you like is just go right in with um, some spruce and maybe even some wind uh, this is bonsai it's like a yellowy green and start getting some trees right on the top of that ridge line um, and they're just going to go right on top of the sky so you don't have to fuss with them too much it's easy to try and be overly detailed way back there in the background you just kind of see something is going on back there and you don't have to um, add a whole bunch of detail to it so if you tack those down along the base first so get the bottom anchored then you can play with pulling a bit of the top up and down and up and down so that they're not straight across so just make it a little bumpy you don't need to try and get a bunch of detail into that up there and you can always go back and peek it down in parts where you want or pull it up in other parts so get the essence of it in place first uh, Sue Fuller says, I have learned all I know from you who taught you. Sue, the truth is um, that the first thing I ever needle felted was from a kit. It was a doll from a lady who's retired. And after that, it was self-exploration until I took my first class. It was 100% wet felting of a picture. And I'd already been wet felting since then, but it was 100% wet felting of a picture um, in 2012 and other than having teachers here I've never taken a class from somebody else so it's been a lot of self-exploration for sure um, okay so what I'm gonna do and I'm going to let me pop up this image for you one more time is that better okay so I know you probably can't see my mouse I can see my mouse look away up there in the top of the hills and see how it's not a solid you know one way or another see how um, there are just some hills up there and they're not real distinct one color or another that's what we're going to do right now is kind of get some of those colors right up there in place so you can do something like your olive and then mix your olive with this uh, pecan color just to get it a little bit ready um, or you could just if you fill in with a green and here I have a little triangle right there if you kind of fill in this triangle and this is kind of my approach is I attack this in little tiny spaces and try and get the essence of those colors in there and again I let it bleed off the side because I want it all to show so then I've mixed this pecan actually with a little shire and if I just put that on top and I'm gonna in this case use my 42 triangle needle and then you have like a background in there an essence of a color and you can always go back and add some bushy stuff if you want 
So let's keep filling in, let's keep filling in these hills a bit. And I think that you don't have to be overly detailed. What you can do is come back and hit those details as you go. So here's a quick example, um, capturing the yellow in the corner. Um, this green can stay pretty neutral and then we'll get in there with our lavender. So I'm just going to put some of this green right into, right into place here because they're all going to have bushes over it anyway. And let me see what you have. Okay, Angela says, Angela asked a question, and it's a great question, Angela, because we are going to get to that today. And Angela says she sh she's seen that we, uh, we iron over wet felting, but do we also iron over needle felting? And yes, I have my iron right here off of site, and I plan to, off of camera, I plan to needle felt this when we get to the end. I want to get you into most of this picture. For those of you who've never joined us before, um, we like to do lives and really encourage people to just kind of go for it and spread their wings. So we're all about teaching techniques and not necessarily copying a particular project, but you're welcome to copy, you know, any project that we share is we're putting out for you um, as a tool, a training tool or a fun, a fun thing to do. So um, really we're about techniques and I say that to say we're not going to wrap this up like a great uh, you know, 20 minute video would, but we're really going to get um, the idea of it in place so that y'all can do it on your own. Now look, put this mango right here and I'm going to get that mango into place and you can let it be solid, this yellow bit, and then we can drag some green or brown right over the top to give it a little more interest. So how are y'all thinking about this? How are y'all thinking about this so far? Is this helpful? Is this interesting? Does it look worse than you thought? <laughs> Do you think it's working? Do you think like, uh, you know, to tell us, tell us your comments. So in the, in the people who are watching the live show, you're able to leave your comments right here for us. And those who aren't watching the live show, you can leave your comments down below. Um, we are going to give away prizes, and I do have two names of people who won from last week, and I'm going to share those with you in just a moment. This line right here is my lavender. This is my little lavender area right up here. So I'm just going to get this yellow into place, and then we'll go back over it. Don't want it on my road, but let me move it out of the way. So... Can you wet felt the fiber slightly before you place it on the felt? I wouldn't because uh, who asked that question? Um, I'm so sorry. I want to read. I want to read that. Uh, that is Maria. Maria and Sam. Maria and Sam. Don't wet felt this stuff before you before you put it on. If you're trying to combine it, just do a hand sort of a hand melding the things together. But don't wet felt it because you need to needle felt dry. You need to needle felt the fiber dry, and also you won't be able to blend it you know like you want on your piece so please needle felt it dry and it would be better just to blend it together before you um, before you apply it okay let's get some lavender in here that's what today is all about I'm choosing grape because man I love grape grape is awesome it's one of those colors we don't always have so get it get it in your stash same with blueberry we don't always have it um, but we do our best to kind of keep it in stock. So this is kind of going to be right back here. It doesn't go all the way, all the way. And those trees are sitting right on top of it. So maybe I'm going to take it to right about there and get that lavender field in place. Do y'all like lavender? It's, it's one of my favorites. Lavender is just one of my absolute most favorite smells in the whole world. And we do sell French lavender here. I love it personally. Our prize winners today are all going to get lavender. Our winners from last week and our winners of today will all get some fresh lavender to take home from your French vacation. <sighs> oh, Bev says this is helpful. Bev, thank you so much for your kind words. I'm really grateful. Um, Faith Mother Goddess says, do we have a landscape pack of MC1? I don't. You know, the truth is there are so many. We make over 90 colors of MC1, and it would be a challenge for us to make everything that we do into a pack. Um, so I don't have a pack for today. 
I'm going to put a little more of our landscapey blend back here. And on my others, I really did, uh, on my others, on my other pieces, I really did get a, um, I really did have fun getting all the little bushes in there and getting a little more detailed. And um, so have fun with that as you work on your pieces. I see some you know, grass just popping through there. There's little lines and trails all running through here. So if you get your major color lines in place, then you can have fun getting all those in as well. Um, and you can just, you know, drop your bushes in whenever you see them. And you don't have to use just spruce or just the bonsai. You can mix those together as well and get your, kind of get your bushes into place. However you're feeling it, however you're feeling it, you can just kind of drop them in here, drop in little globs. Okay. Y'all are leaving good feedback. Um, <laughs> Uh, Linda asked me, have I used a grid? You know what, Linda, I don't, uh, so some people like to grid out their, their photograph and then focus on one area. I've never personally had a lot of success with that because I feel like I, it separates me a little bit more from my project than I want to be separated. I feel like somehow I get a distance between myself and the piece when I do a grid. So I don't do that, but I think the, you know, the best tools are the use are the ones that work for you. I think whatever tools you like and work for you, those are the ones to use. I think, you know, we all see the world a little bit differently and that is what makes it so special is that we're all so different. Like my husband can do great feng shui in a room and I am really great at filling up like every little space in a room. So <laughs> I think that that's what makes the world awesome is the way we all kind of approach it differently. Okay, so I'm gonna get this little lavender field in here. And again, remember that um, you can fill it in and then you can go back and add details on top. And I'll show you what I mean when we get a little bit closer because more details show up the, the closer you get to where you are. And it's more vague the further you are away. I would love to see about putting a little, I don't know, some other subject in here, like a little chateau or a little, little stone house back there somewhere. Uh, the Art Corner says she uses as lavender essential oil always. I, I fell in love with lavender when I was a candle maker. We, we used to make my very first business, I, I made candles and, um, and a lot of them. And I used to buy lavender in 10 gallon drums. And I fell in love with premium lavender essential oil it's it's not only relaxing it's actually also balancing which i think is just awesome okay look see this little bit of grass in here and you look in here the grasses are getting a little more yellow you can blend yellow with your greens or you could pull out something like this which is a lemongrass and it's all it's like you kind of get the blend already for you uh, some of these blends are just awesome because they're just you get them and they're not a completely homogeneous blend. Again, this is all our MC1 and it's almost like just ready, ready for you to use just like that. And then you can add, before it's tacked down all the way, that's when I would add just a little bit of the yellow right on top. And you want it to be thin enough so that the green shows through underneath and that just adds a little bit of dimension just like that there. Okay, so now I get up here to this little lavender field. Um, I want some highlights and lowlights, and so I'm gonna blend just a little bit with boysenberry so that I have it available. Just pinch, pinch and blend, pinch and blend. Terry says she can't wait to do this, but she has so many projects started. Terry, I am so with you. I have a few going too. I am the same way. I get a lot of projects going. So this one is a little more heathered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the darkest one right back here. And what you notice too in the, the front of this picture is you start to see the rows a little bit more. And if it speaks to you, then you could just start building this in the rows that you see rather than, you know, one big straight line. Or you can go back and add 
you know, the essence of those rows together. So I want to see some blueberry. Now blueberry is just a little bit different. See how it's a little more, a little less purple and a little more towards the blue. So you can also start just like you could make a row and then just tack that right on top and start to start to sort of blend as you paint. Blend as you paint if you want. You don't have to lift the felt. Linda says, do you not have to lift the felt? So now traditionally we would teach to, you know, peel up the felt as you work so it doesn't stick to your foam and basically tear up your foam. But I'm working with a very fine 42 gauge needle and so no, because very little of the wool is going through to the background. So that is going to allow me to save my, fet, my foam and not destroy it. If you're working with a 38 spiral or a 38 star and you do this, what happens is you're pushing a ton of the wool to the back and you're going to notice it on your foam. And that is to say your foam is going to get eaten up um, because the wool entangles with the open cells of the foam and it's going to latch on there. So if you want to preserve your foam, then only use as an aggressive needle as you have to in doing a project like this. So now I'm just going to show you building up here you can start to notice how the rows kind of fan out and they get a little more space well you can start to kind of fan that out also for yourself and then you can kind of fill in with the green if you want um, so that you get a little more of that effect so they're kind of close together up here and then they get a little bit further apart And we just leave a little more space and then we can go back and fill in that space even with some green. Uh, I'm going to use again this guy right here so that we get some of this stuff just right underneath here. So what's fun about this is how tiny it is. What's the, the, the fibers themselves are so tiny and so fine that you can just kind of spread them out and lay them down you're not dealing with great big clumps and notice that I left this kind of loose and that leaves me a little room to kind of blend these guys together while I'm working and you can always um, go back and add just a little bit on top to you know sort of mask anything that looks like too strong of a line and I'll show you what I mean right here I'm gonna blend this with a little olive because it's not quite so dark here right here make it look a little more natural. Um, Julia says, what do you do with the little leftover bits of wool? I have a little collection, like when I get stuff that's really tiny, I have a little collection vessel in my studio and I put them in there and then I'll card them all together to be used as, um, they'll get used as core in something else. So. Now here, I'm just going to blend some little bits together because I, I want this to be a little more natural like it is there. Uh, let me go the green. A little more natural like it is there and where the bushes are just kind of growing up and they don't look like an exactly straight line. So you can just kind of clump it and cluster it so it's not completely straight and just looks a little more natural. But again, we're going for painterly, not exact, exact, exact. And if you kind of want to see how you're doing, it's hard, you know, when it all bleeds off, is you can just kind of start to frame it. And then as you, if you keep these little mats around, and we covered that in a, another class, but if you kind of keep these little mats around, then you can pause and step back and get a little more of a distant view of your piece and just see how you're doing. How, how do you like it? When I say how are you doing, I mean how are you liking what's coming together for yourself? That's really the most important thing, is how are you feeling about it? So I'm gonna take my Shire here and I'm gonna mix it with just, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and mix it with a little bit of my Bonsai to kind of get the darker parts of these, these grasses. But I think it's not Bonsai 100%, it's more like a blend. Um, if you use a less, Space says if you use a less of aggressive needle it won't leave as many holes or marks space that is true and now keep in mind that we're also applying a fine amount 
a fine amount uh, of wool as well. You know, you you um, if you're doing a 3D needle felt project, well then you kind of have to work up to being able to use the fine needle. Okay, so I'm going to snake this along, and I just I just pull it. This is kind of how I do it. I just kind of pull it to where I want it. So I start with that clump, and then I kind of pull it into shape, and then I'm going to tack it down. But again, I'm tacking down. Um, Use your finger. If you want to pull something off? Use your finger and pull off, and that way it doesn't rip, you know, the length of the fiber. So I like to tack it into place and then draft it out. Draft, as in drafting, is also said about pulling, but I more think like a draft. Think about a draft document or a sketch, if you will. It's like you're just kind of sketching it until you make some solid decisions by lightly tacking it down because at this point if you don't like it you could just pull that right off and now this grass in here is more yellow and dancing and playful so I'm gonna mix this lemongrass with even more yellow but you remember you want a hundred percent coverage so let's get a little of this right on this side and then we're gonna fill in the middle with the lighter colors And thank you all for playing with me. Thank you for being here. I can't wait to see if you try a different project or you try this particular project. Let's blend these together. Um, Vicki says to save the foam, is it more of an angle or the needle? It's, it's more the needle than the angle. The saving the foam is more the, is more the needle that, than the angle. Um, and Norma says, can she add a layer of purple and then the lighter purple? Absolutely, yes, 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 yes. That's what we did here, you know, you so, and we can go back now and add even more lighter ones on top. So yes, you can, and that's kind of like what we did with the sky. So here, you see where you want these to come together. Just feather this over on top of the other. Just feather it out so that you get a little bit of layering on there. And you can always double layer. You don't have to stop with one. Go back, add more, add a pinch, add a tuff, add a layer. And if the, you know, if the 42 triangle is just not cutting it on the bigger area, then go to the 40. Go to the 40. You want all this laying down. So now you go to the 40, and if you were to zoom in, you could see those needle marks and then go back to your like your 42 cluster is great for bigger areas you notice that I'm not going I'm not going like this I'm just tacking it down tacking it down tacking it down okay <sighs> Angela says I don't know how you talk when you're working on this I put on classical piano music and tell my husband don't bother me <laughs> Oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get, I've missed some, some stuff in here, and I, I don't have all the detail that you might see, so I'm going to just hurry and kind of get some, uh, get some detail in here. I know that there's actually a double layer of fields in here, and I didn't get them all in, but I'm going to put in a little swath of green here, and I'll probably come back and add that detail in. <clears throat> Now, for those of you, if you find this a little intimidating, if it feels like a little too much to tackle, you might go on our YouTube channel, um, and we have even a, a couple of kits, but we have some 2D, there's like a winter, like a house in the snow. One of them is Red Cabin in the Snow. And what you can do is start with something that's fewer colors and a little more basic. And we even show you how you can maybe cut out the major lines of your image um, and find your way doing that. Okay, now check this out. I'm going to bring this yellow almost all the way here, but right here, right here, it's like brown and green. So you might remember I said let's bring in that pecan. And pecan is already a blend, and then you can blend it a little bit with your mango. I see I'm making a righteous mess. All of this wool around my around my uh, foam block here is pretty typical of me. So I'm going to mix this together, but it really needs some green. And so I'm going to bring that uh, just a pinch of the Shire in. And you can make blends just this small and see, is it what you like? 
Can you, uh, Katie says, can you add a little silk into the mix to make it shine? You know, you could, I think you would have a little more of a challenge mixing silk with this, with the MC1, because silk tends to be a longer fiber and the MC1 is so fine. But you know, you can give it a go or you could cut it or you could also check out our mishmash lesson. We called it fiber mishmash and on the YouTube channel, what you would see is a, like a fall tree on a bright blue sky and we did this little fiber mishmash where we blended like MC1 fibers and all kinds of fibers including luster fibers we mixed them all up and then we chopped them up to make a tree with lots of texture and shiny bits so you might check that out and see if it's something you're interested in doing um, and these are real clean lines so even if your lines don't go how you want them at first then what you can do is you lay that down as the under and then just go back and this is a little like grass line right here I guess and put that right on top so that you form that hill that you see right there right there is a hill and I'm gonna tack this on so it's okay if it's not perfect at first and again some of you are gonna prefer to just fill all this in with some general color and then go back and add the detail and whatever you like is the exact way to do it whatever you like okay so we have some grass to fill in over here it's kind of the same as we had but let's get some bushes in and we're just gonna get this kind of mostly there um, okay some of you are saying that you did the uh, red cabin in the snow is it's very satisfying to do the red cabin in the snow and just kind of get there so if you're brand brand new to 2d you might try that project red cabin in the snow we what we did was we needle felted is that the one we I know we did a couple of those one of them we needle felted onto our Christmas stocking but you could just do it onto uh, wool felt also so this is the basic idea here in this area and I would go back in this in this uh, area and make this look a little more true I'm going to show you one of my others in a moment but let's get in some of these bushes and I want to see uh, I want to see you do the larger bushes. Okay, so here we go. So here's the larger bushes. Now, they aren't all one color, so you definitely want to get some variegation going in there. And you can either do it by pre-blending or blending after you put them in. But check this out. Like, let's do this. Let's kind of do this guy right here. What I would do with this stuff, especially since it's a bat and see how it's all kind of willy-nilly, I'm going to make myself that little bush um, just like that and I'm gonna put him on the trail see how he's kind of like that I'm gonna put him on and then I'm gonna needle felt him into place so he's he's not perfect I mean again I'm not exact I'm not great at doing what you see on the paper but I've decided that I'm not gonna let that keep me from having fun with it <laughs> I just decided that it doesn't mean that you can't have fun with something even if you aren't as expert as some people are and then you can let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit here what you can do is pull up some of the wisps that you see and just pull them up and down and up and down and just play with that getting it a little more a little more bushy so it's not just a round round clump and you can always add more on too so in and out and you do that you pull that before it's of course needle felted all the way down and then you want some of this grass poking right on top so take a pinch just take a pinch of whatever grass you have and then put that right there and do the same thing so that you, you don't want hard lines and sometimes that's the point of that angle going this way because if you go like this or like this then you're not um, you know blending as well so go towards that so that you can just kind of mute that very bottom edge and not make it so obviously a hard line and remember that most of your pictures we're going to be looking super close when we're working on something but most of the time you're viewing a picture at a distance so if you allow yourself to step back a little bit or again pull in your matting so you get a little perspective then um, yeah, then you can like, keep playing on it. So I'm going to put in a few more, and then some of you have asked 
uh, should we needle felt these? I mean, should we iron these? And I say yes. So if you give me a second here, I'm going to drop a few more bushes onto our travels here and then we'll press one of the ones I already did. And you can press it in the middle too just to see how it's going, but just remember that pressing is not needle felting. Pressing is not needle felting. It's just going to smooth out what you've already needle felted. So you can get some of your dark and your blend running along that road there and, and um, just kind of get them in place and then allow it to clump up as you work. So allow it to go down to nothing and then let this little bit clump up and go down to nothing here and clump up. So you don't have to put in each one. You can kind of suggest them as you as you go and then go back and add more detail and or make them taller like some of them are taller than others so and this is a whole span of bushes right here but you have this light green in between so let that little light green bit be here to give you some separation and you can get your bigger bushes and just kind of drop them in and you've got bushes here too so as you add these, it's going to give it more perspective, and you can always blend it. Uh, you can always blend these up or get the idea of them in place, and then go back and add blends that give you more of the distinction that you're looking for. Meaning, um, just make them look a little more realistic, or like the sun is catching them. So I want some more of this yellow in here. And I know with mine, it's probably hard to tell. But remember, if you're going to have these on display, people are going to be viewing them from a distance. They're not going to be as on top of them as you are when you're making them. And so what do y'all think? Are we kind of... Are we kind of capturing it? We're still way, way, way in draft mode, but can you see how you might start to build this out? Or can you see yourself getting there, um, you know, just through taking these little tiny little baby steps. Get my little green road in there a little bit. Get some of maybe of the olive in places so it's not just solid color. Patch that in and give everything. There's a lot still to do on this piece. There's a lot of fun still to have. There's a lot of detail to add. But I think it's starting to look a little bit like a pastel, um, a pastel of this beautiful photograph that we're allowed to work from. And I really look forward to seeing what you all think about that. So what I'm going to do is clear things off um, just a little bit here. I'll let you all look at that for a second. I'm going to get my iron plugged in. Now, I don't, I don't, yeah, I do. I have water in my iron. And I look forward to reading. Um, can I show a slide view? Yes, Melissa, I will do that. <laughs> Kevin says, happy little bush. Thank you so much. Um, should, do you ever get your fingers? Sometimes I do prick my fingers. I do, sometimes. I don't bleed as much as I used to, but sometimes I prick my fingers. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to clear some of my stuff out of the way here, and let me bring in, so this was the first one that I did, and the sky was a little bit lighter, and I also went a little more red. Uh, these, these are very similar, using the same colors on the lavender, but the sky was a little bit uh, lighter, and um, I went in and added more of the detail back here. But this image was a little small, and I wanted to give you a bigger one. So I went back, and this is this one I did last night, and I still think it's in draft mode. It's not much more progressed than the one we did today together. There's a lot to add still. But I want to show you that, that uh, oh, you wanted to see a side. So this one is unfinished and not as flat as we want. But let me peel it off, and you can see, one, I didn't destroy my foam, right? The foam's in good condition. This is the back. You can see that it's fuzzy, but it's not, there's not a whole bunch of fiber transferred to the back. And this is still fuzzy, so it needs to be needle felted down more. It's very much in draft mode, whereas this one is pretty nice and flat. And so let's press this just so you can see what that is like. And it's, you know, it's so easy. 
You can press something before it's 100% finished, but just remember that the pressing, uh, the pressing does not felt it. And so, well, let me say that uh, so that I'm clear in what I'm saying. The pressing doesn't felt it. So if you have a mound of fiber and it's like, you know, sticking up off your piece like this and you iron it, it's going to smush out and it's going to take up more area than it did a moment ago when it was unfelted. So it will smush out and won't look as defined as it did just a moment ago. So that's something to keep in mind. And it's also some fun to have because the first time I learned that, I needle felted something that wasn't flat. <laughs> Okay, so all you have to do when you're, when you're done, when you're happy, you've needle felted it all the way, is just give it a good press. And my iron's still kind of heating up. You can, dry, you can dry press it, and you can iron it with a, um, a cloth if you want. But, and you can also, so I got some steam going now. Hopefully you can see that. Just press right over it. And it's going to help just, it'll help smooth out your very finest needle marks, and that's what I would consider it for. It also helps some of your wispy fibers just to lay down. And if your fiber is a little more fuzzy, a little more hairy than you like, you can even go over and just trim the top of that if you want to. And um, yeah, just you could just trim it. Uh, if it seems too fuzzy or if the wool that you have just seems a little too hairy, you could just trim it all down. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading uh, more of your questions and see what you think about today's project. Remember that you can um, go to our website and download the PDF. We will paste the description, the link in the video description after the live show. You can also go to our Facebook page. We posted a link there. And if you make this project, I hope you'll share it in our Facebook page. I brought a few show and tells with you, so I want to show you a few things um, from some friends. And uh, just thank you all so much for felting with me today. So uh, if you, this is your first time joining us, what you may not know is that we give away prizes at the end of every show. And what we've been doing is we give away prizes for people who watch the live show with us. And then we give away prizes to people who leave comments after the live show is ended, you can leave comments down below. So we draw names for uh, those comments as well after. And so I have two prize winners from last week, and I'm going to give those to you right now. And uh, the fairies drew those names, and they are right here. Can you read them? So Lisa Wern and Carrie Kirk, you are both prize winners from last week. And last week's prizes were, you got to choose any four of our luster fibers that you want uh, from our stash. And so that is the, your prizes. But also, you're going to win... Um, a bag of French lavender and these really fun mugs which were made by our friend Joanne Stratikos of Mudworks Pottery in Pennsylvania. She's a small woman-owned business. She does our uh, living felt mugs which are super super cool um, so she makes these for us but she made these mugs with these inspirational sayings on them and sent them to us to give away so we're gonna give the winners today are gonna get your prize your regular prize and you're also gonna get a mug with uh, a bag of lavender as well so congratulations to Carrie and Liz and then I, I brought just a couple of show and tells for those of you who are, have never been in our group. Oh, I didn't load them up. I can't show them. I lied. Okay, so I don't have show and tells for you. So why don't we just draw uh, two more names of winners from today's live. So for today's live, what you're going to win, folks, is you're going to get to choose any three colors of our MC1 batting, and these are the half ounce bags, so we're gonna send you three half ounce bags of MC1, you get to choose, and you'll also get uh, our 100% wool, pick a wool felt sheet, any color you want. So we'll have you email uh, us or use the contact us page on our website, and I'm just gonna draw two names right now, and if I don't draw your name, don't despair. You can leave comments down below, and we'll draw those next week. I have two names right here. And if I didn't answer your question today, please post it down below. I will 
spend the next couple of days reading all of those and answering them. So here we go. Lee Davies, congratulations, Lee. And Vicki, go. Congratulations, Vicki. I hope those names show up. I'll see if I can get past the lights here. There you go, folks. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope this has been fun. If you learned something new, I hope you'll leave a comment down below after the live feed and let us know what was your favorite takeaway. Those comments we will draw prizes from. And remember, if you uh, do any of our projects on Instagram, please tag us so that we can see them. Stop over by our group. Um, make sure you join. You have to answer questions. You have to have some Facebook profile history. And um, oh, did I click the one one? So that's where you can get stuff. And this is our Facebook. And then there again is our Instagram. All right, y'all. That's it for me this time. Thank you so much. I hope that you'll take extra special care of yourself. Think about your daydream vacation. I have more for you in the daydream vacation hat. And we'll do um, some other fun pictures together. And I'll also think about wet felting one our wet and needle felting one with you too. All right, until next time, y'all. I see you then. See you in our group. Bye.